Let's talk about 12 things that I have cut from my budget and don't regret. The first is brand names. You will never ever see me carrying around anything that is brand name or purchasing anything that is brand name because that's just something I cut from my budget. I realized a long time ago that Falling for brand names is falling into this keeping up with the Joneses, keeping up appearances, and it's exhausting. This is just something that the older I've become, the more confident I've become, the less I feel the need to showcase that I can buy a thousand dollar purse. And what's funny is, when I was in college, I remember all of the girls had their Louis Vuitton purses and I felt so left out. I really wanted one so that I could fit in, but the truth was I couldn't afford it at that time, so I just ended up not having one of those purses and not fitting in. But even now that I am in a better financial position compared to what I was in college, now that I can afford those brand name things, I just don't feel the need. I don't necessarily want to fit in and I don't feel the need to show off any money that I have. It's funny because I was at a party the other day and I saw two girls wearing the exact same belt and I had seen that same belt on Instagram too. So I turned to my friend and I said, wow, like cover girl, this cover girl belt is really doing well. It's really popular. And she laughed and she told me that it's a Gucci belt, but I had no idea because I thought it said CG, which I associated with CoverGirl. So <laughs> clearly I don't know anything about brands, but I am so happy that I cut buying brand name items from my budget. I don't regret it at all. The second thing that I've cut from my budget is buying items that are on sale. Now I know this is going to sound weird, so let me explain. The problem with sale items is that it tricks you into thinking that you're getting a good deal, so much so that you're buying an item that you weren't going to buy otherwise. Let's say that there's a $3 item on sale for $2. Well, I used to think that I was getting a great deal and saving $1 on that item, but actually I was spending $2 that I wasn't otherwise planning on spending. Obviously, I'm all for sales when it's something that you would purchase regardless of the sale, like toilet paper. But in the vast majority of cases, especially for myself, I just found that sale was just a trigger word to spend money that I wouldn't have otherwise spent. So I cut that out of my budget and I'm really happy about that. The third thing that I've cut from my budget is fashionable or aspirational clothing. I'm just not interested. I will never ever be the most fashionable person in the room. I'm sure you noticed, but I rotate the same five or six white shirts on every YouTube video, and that's just how I am in real life too. <laughs> Similar to what I said about the brand names, it's exhausting to try to keep up with whatever is fashionable at the time because you spend the money on it, it's fashionable, but then a year later, it's not fashionable and that piece of clothing is worthless to you. I don't know if other people do this or if this was just a me problem, but I used to buy clothing that I would categorize as aspirational clothing. It's clothing that wouldn't even zip up, but it was my motivation to get to the gym. But the problem is now I have a pile of clothing that does not fit me and it was a complete waste of money. So I've cut fashionable clothing and aspirational clothing out of my budget and don't regret it. The fourth thing that I've cut out is buying these souvenirs or knickknacks from airports or tourist shops. I used to buy shot glasses at every destination that I would go to. And while they're cute, what I realized is that one, they're a waste of money. The $5 adds up very quickly. And two, now I have so many shot glasses that I don't even have the storage for and I'm not using them. So really they take up a lot of room and they wasted my money. So, <laughs> so I've stopped buying those. The fifth thing that I cut out from my budget is Starbucks. I don't actually drink coffee, so I was going to Starbucks and buying chai tea lattes. And one, these chai tea lattes are loaded with sugar, so not very good for me. And two, that $5 per latte adds up very quickly and that money could be better spent elsewhere. What I realized is that I was just buying it out of habit, just because I was in this pattern of, oh, if I'm bored, I'm going to treat myself to a latte. One of the things that I did when I was trying to cut down my spending so that I could pay off my student loans was to look through the list of items I purchased in one month. And if there were repeat items, I tried to really ask myself, am I repurchasing these because they really increase my quality of life and make me happy or just out of habit? And for things like that Starbucks latte, I realized it was just out of habit and when I cut it out from my budget, my quality of life didn't decrease in any way. So sometimes it takes that process of elimination to figure out what is actually bringing you value versus what is just out of habit. 
Number six, I stopped buying books because while I was living in DC for law school, I discovered that there's an app called Libby where you can rent books through your local public library. So ever since then, I've stopped buying books and now I just rent exclusively through Libby, which is amazing because it comes at zero cost to me. Number seven, I cut anything that I would consider high maintenance out of my budget. So that's getting my nails done, getting my hair done, getting eyelash extensions. So for hair, I used to have blonde tips, but that was really high maintenance because you have to have a special purple shampoo for it and you have to keep getting it done over and over again so that it stays healthy and you have to get your hair cut a lot because you're frying your hair by bleaching it. That was just exhausting and too high maintenance, so I cut that out. For nails, I just leave my nails very short like this. And I used to get eyelash extensions, which is where they put an, an eyelash extension on each individual eyelash. But that's one, very expensive. And two, you have to go every three weeks to get it redone. Otherwise, you have just like one long eyelash hanging on for dear life. And it's not a good look. So I basically cut everything that's high maintenance out of my lifestyle. Number eight, I didn't technically cut this from my budget because I never had it, but I will never ever buy a new car. My primary means of transportation is my two legs, my bicycle, and public transportation. And if I ever live somewhere where I need a car, I will never be buying a new car. I will be buying a used car all the way. Purchasing a new car is probably the biggest financial trap that most Americans fall into because the moment you drive that car off the lot, you lose so much value. And a used car will work just as well to get you from point A to point B. The problem with buying a brand new car, similar to what I was saying about buying brand name items, is I worry that it's primarily ego driven out of this need to want to impress other people. The real winners are going to be those people who, instead of financing a brand new car, pay cash for a used car that works just as well for a fraction of the price and use that extra money to secure their financial future, whether it means building up an emergency fund or paying off high interest debt or investing that into the market, that's where the real winners are going to shine. The next thing I've cut out from my budget is subscriptions. I have my three main subscriptions that I really enjoy, Spotify, Netflix, and Hulu, and I derive great value from them and really they increase my quality of life. So I keep those, but the rest of the subscriptions I've cut ruthlessly. Subscriptions are really sneaky because the typical structure is they give you a seven day or 14 day free trial, but require your billing information for that. And then most people forget to cancel that free trial. So it turns into a monthly recurring subscription and they typically don't notify you at the beginning of each month when they're going to recharge you for that subscription. It's honestly a sneaky model that many, many people fall prey to. So what I'd recommend doing is every three months or as often as you can, go through all of your credit card statements and figure out what you're paying for. Because chances are you may be paying for something that you didn't realize you were paying for just because you took a seven day free trial and forgot to cancel that subscription. Number 10, I've cut out of my budget going to the movies. The movies have become so expensive that by the time you factor in two tickets, and the obligatory popcorn and drinks, it turns into a $50 outing. And that's just really expensive. And I'd much rather prefer watching that movie at home three months down the line and paying $4.99 to rent the movie. Number 11, I cut out cable TV. I realized that between Netflix and Hulu and my free library books, I have all of the entertainment I need and I had no need for cable TV. So I cut that out probably around five years ago and haven't looked back since. Number 12, I cut out from my budget holiday gifts. So Christmas gifts, birthday gifts, and I don't regret it. I think this started maybe seven or eight years ago. My mom sat us down and said, look, we're too old for Christmas gifts. You're not going to get any Christmas gifts, but what we do want to do is volunteer our time at this local orphanage. So we started doing that. And ever since it's completely changed my mentality for spending around holidays. Look, I'm not the Grinch. I love the idea of showing the people around you that you care during the holidays, but I just think there are better ways to do that. There are free ways to do that. You can write them a nice, lovely card or something. Americans will spend on average $942 on Christmas gifts. But I can honestly tell you that I spent $0 on Christmas gifts last year because again, I found other ways to show the people around me that I care. 
My overall mindset for spending is that I have no problem spending on the things that really bring me joy, that really bring me value, but I don't want to spend on anything just because one, it's out of habit, or two, it's based on my ego, my need to want to impress people. I think if you cut those two things ruthlessly and spend on the things that bring you joy, you'll be in a very good position financially as opposed to if you're spending a lot of money trying to impress people or just spending money out of habit regularly. My name is Erica. Let me know if you've cut any of these things out of your budget too, or what else you've cut out of your budget. I'd love to talk to you in the comments below. And if this is your first time watching, I do personal finance videos every Tuesday on this channel, and you can watch these two videos, which I'm really proud of.